music started by mistake kind of i always wanted to do it but i was super duper duper shy my older sister has sang forever so she was known as the singer in my family and i was in a dance group called mystical we decided to go on britain's got talent but we didn't want to be like the ordinary dance group so we thought okay let's mix it with music so while dancing we'll be singing and there was three singers picked and i was one of them and now when i think back i'm like was that actually crazy like that was such a massive risk because it was going to be we knew it was going to be televised so i was like imagine if i was like crap and like simon cow was there so you know how he's like it's a no yeah. from me and i was like oh my gosh imagine but when i went on stage he was like wow he actually pointed me out he was like who's that girl in the orange tie i was like the first take they actually didn't show on tv i was like rachel for me lola your boy got and he was like pardon i was like rachel <laughs> <laughs> which was so funny it's actually so funny but yeah um after that that's when my career really started yes i am <clears throat> my dad is english he lived here for 40 years 45 my mom is Ghanaian, but she was born and brought up here and i was born and brought up here i lived here for 16 years 16 lovely years and um, then moved to ghana then moves to the UK for university and then of, back here. That's a lot of mixed heritage. You know, I know it's a British, lot. British, Ghanaian, Nigerian. It's a lot. So why did you decide, like you know, to be in the Nigerian setup instead of the Ghanaian setup? As I said, like my mom was brought up here, li literally brought up here. Like my mom can flow you over for a year. You'd be like, what's going on? Even my dad. We were mad, like he could follow you, but and sometimes it would scare people. I remember even in London one time, there was a guy that was working somewhere and he said something to my dad in Europe, but my dad flipped out and turned around and I was like, oh my God, daddy, please, like, I beg, don't start insulting. My dad was insulted in Europe, I was like, hey God. So all I know and knew is Nigeria. I never really got to explore my Ghanaian side. So I, I was like, if I'm going to do music, I have to be true to who I am and what I know, and it's Nigeria. He was a big, he played a big role. Initially, he was the person that was like, no, I don't want you to do this. I want you to stay in school because it's the safer route, you know, you're in a good university. So he was like always against it, especially because he got offered a record deal at the age of 20. Um, and he he was too scared because he had to support his family so he decided to go and work in whatever he did and he ended up in Nigeria so actually very luckily he ended up in Nigeria now I'm doing Nigerian music so thank you daddy um, I remember when I first filmed Watch My Tingo I was at university and my dad was so against it but me and my partner we saved up all our pocket money and I was working I was working at Coco Bar I was working at Selfridges I, I had three jobs to wow. film watch my Tingo video and when I put it together and I'm going to go and present it to him and I walked out the room because I was really scared he just came back and he was just clapping he was like wow I'm so proud of you so after that he supported it a lot and then he came to watch one of my perform he only got to watch one of my performances um, Destination Africa in London and he, he cried and he was like I'm so proud of you this is what you're meant to do so that will always I always remember that how about your mom my mom obviously she's like an African woman she's like go to school go back to school even actually I spoke to her today she was like happy birthday darling I was like thank you mommy she was like any chance of going back to school I was like mom I'm actually just about to go to an interview she's like you can't be studying in the car I was like hey god so I think maybe I would do like a at home course for her to be happy but she is like my biggest fan she knows all the lyrics in my song sometimes it's embarrassing she started singing watch my tingle at church okay that's embarrassing it was very embarrassing <laughs> but it's like cool that your mom supports me you know the thing is when you assign to these major corporations they have a way that they want to market you that isn't really sometimes it's not your persona and it definitely wasn't mine and i just felt like i'd be living in like a lie so i and i wanted to make music that i i would want to dance to if i was a clubber which i'm not and he does not believe me <laughs> if if i was a club i'd want to dance to that music and it wasn't my type of music and also we had problems in my group so i thought okay do you know what let me go let me leave and try and do this by myself I've noticed that it's very tough for girls. Us females do not have it easy. You have like 20 guys, you know, 
the best guys on stage and then you have like one female or two females allowed to perform so i'm hoping now we change actually this year i feel like it's going to change a lot because girls are not sleeping yeah. like their songs like they're releasing songs like guys like and even guys are dancing to them now and you hear like guys playing like emma naira victoria and um tiwa in their cars and you're like ah, ah. before like only have been whiskey davido you know so Well, firstly, congratulations to her. Like, massive blessing to her and her family. I don't feel like it's a it's a space for anybody to take a spot. Like I always say, Beyonce was pregnant. Beyonce even took two years. Beyonce chilled. She traveled without her baby, Blue Ivy. They were just chilling on yours. Beyonce came back and she was number one. So I feel like T was started it really for us all. So she's gonna come back and she will still be number one. And she's gonna revamp herself now. She's a mother. She's open to so many more markets. And you know, I'm just hoping, Nigeria, you're ready for. She says she's queen, maybe a princess, you know, homegirl on the side. So yeah. Um, when Watch My Tingle came out, we were approached. I'm very gratefully approached by so many amazing records. We were approached by almost every single label. Almost, I didn't say like, before people come came, I said almost every single label in Nigeria and was so grateful. However, after meeting Kamal and 2020 media team, I just felt as if I didn't need to sign. Like they, they had everything and more that a label would have and they made me feel like family. And I just thought that there's the, there's the internet now. Why should I sign to a label when the internet in Jesus' name and, and God? 2020 media, the internet is a perfect mix. I went to watch his show in London. He did like a, this is when he brought out his album. And I went to watch it. And I met, I got to meet him backstage um, with one of my friends because his manager, it's a very long story, but I got to meet him. And um, I was like, hey, yeah, I'm an artist. He's like, oh, okay. I was like, no, 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 I'm really an artist. He's like, oh, okay. You know, at that time, I hadn't brought anything, so nobody really took me serious. And the next day, I got a call from my partner. She was like, ah, do you meet Ice yesterday? I was like, oh, yeah, I did. He was really nice. She was like, yeah, he wants you to be like the lead girl in his video. I was like, please, me, I'm not shaking any ashu. So please tell him I'm not going to do anything. She was like, no, this was, apparently you're just the angry girlfriend. I was like, ah, me, I could do that well. <laughs> so I got a, so when I did that, I was like, okay, cool went to the video set and we filmed it and it was really fun I just had to fake shout it's funny because in, in the, there's a scene where we're shouting and I look really angry but it's funny I was like what are you going to be eating later he was like ice cream I said me too <laughs> so we were just having fun on set okay apparently I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if you know but there's small rumors that told me we were dating huh me and I yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, please now guys I like met him on that set I met him on the set of that video and but, like that's where it ends Right, cool. And actually, I saw him in Channel O at this in South Africa, Channel O Awards. Yeah, just covering all bases, just to be sure. Obviously, you just have to be yeah. sure. There's too much tripping around, and I ain't talking out of state. So you can keep your shit saving for another day. I'm gonna be a big boy. My goals, I hope to be more consistent because I feel like that's where I've lacked. I brought out a song, it did well, and then I waited a year to bring out a video, and then I waited a year to bring out a single. So I want to be more consistent with my own music, but I also want to like jump on people's songs if they'll allow me. I love to get on some features, loads. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Lola Ray. Here are the top, my top five songs I'm feeling right now. P Square, Shakini, Shakini, Nini, Oya Shakini. I love that. I love the video. The dancing is amazing. And obviously, P Square, uh, basically the Michael Jacksons of Africa. Love it. I love Kiss Daniel Woodrow, as I said before. That guy is amazing. And in Jesus' name, he's going to blow. Um, ah, 
Duvido Aye. How could I miss that one? Okay, guys, that's definitely my wedding song. Nobody can touch you like I do. Okay, so in eight years, everybody, we're going to be dancing to that song. Um, Victoria Kimani show. Again, amazing. I actually listen to that song every day. Literally, it's quite sad. And the last one would be, can I take an old school one? Lagwaja Coco Bilu. Hey, God, don't die. Don't die. Get on that. Hey, okay, I love that song. That's like one of my ultimate jams. I still listen to it. Right. That's my top five. Um, one thing I always live by, I put it in my personal statement when I was trying to get into my university. Um, I can't remember it word for word, but it's every blessing in my life that I've gained came from somebody telling me what I could not do. Yeah, that's one of my biggest philosophies.